Hi everyone, welcome to another sketchbook time video. In this one, I'm not sure what I'm going to be painting, but I do know that I'll be using gouache paint because for some reason I'm heavily into using gouache again at the moment. Um, I feel like in previous months I've kind of given it a bit of a rest because I've been concentrating on my new watercolours and getting to know those and working mainly in watercolour or in acrylic on canvas. Um, my gouache paints, which I have had, some of them I've had for years, like for example, these ones. Um, these are the Lefranc and Bourgeois fine gouache. Um, I've had these since I was in Paris. I bought these at an art shop in Paris. Um, so they've been with me for a minimum of seven years. <laughs> Some of them have probably been with me for the best part of a decade and they're still good, by the way, they still work and they're absolutely fine. I also have um, the Holbein Artist Gouache. I have some really nice colours. Not too many of these, but the colours I have are lovely. So I have that turquoise green and I have an ice blue, which is wonderful. Um, and this gorgeous, gorgeous ash green. You can see this is the one I've used the most. I don't have too many of their colours. I have mainly Windsor and Newton. Um, I really love Windsor and Newton Designs gouache. It's one of my favourite gouache paints. I keep them all in this little wooden drawer, which goes in my little drawer unit on my desk. This just came from Ikea. It's a six drawer unit and I keep all my different paints and bits and pieces in it. So um, yeah, that's my gouache collection at the moment. I have quite a few, as you can see. And yeah, I don't know why, I've just suddenly got really into using them again. I'm loving the fact that they layer so beautifully. You can kind of see, I've dropped stuff all over the book. You can kind of see from this painting here that I did this very loose painting in my sketchbook. They layer so nicely. The colors are just gorgeous. And I love sometimes if I mix a lot of white with them, um, you get these gorgeous kind of pastel colors as well. This is that beautiful ash green color. So it can be darker or I can make it a little bit lighter, but it layers so nicely over the ochre. And yeah, I'm just really enjoying using traditional gouache. You know that I love my Holbein acrylic gouache. And yes, I want to do more videos about that as well. But for now, we're gonna be using traditional gouache. I'm gonna be using this sketchbook. This is um, quite an inexpensive sketchbook. It's by C. White of Brighton. And it's just a cartridge paper. I actually wrote it here. It had a sticker on the front, or sorry, on the back with all of the information. I didn't want to forget what this paper was. So it's an all media acid-free cartridge paper, 140 GSM. So it has quite a nice weight to it. It buckles a little bit when you use paint on it, but it's my sketchbook, so I'm not really that worried. I'm using this one. This is my kind of experimental, um, I'm calling it, what did I call it the other day? My looser experimental sketchbook where I'm kind of forcing myself to break away from being so precise in my art. So um, this was the first looser painting I did the other day. There's not much in the sketchbook. I only have a couple of things. Um, and this one is something quite different for me as well. Uh, this, I just wanted to have a go at abstract painting. So that's what I came up with. I really like blues and greens. Um, I love this neo color over the top here where you see this gorgeous which one is this this is the it's a neo color one in salmon um, and that goes over the top of the gouache paint really nicely i also put a bit of white neo color on there and i think actually this so i think some of this is white neo color and some of this is um that amazing pencil that i was told about one of my subscribers told me the Holbein Artist Coloured Pencil in Soft White. This goes over the top of gouache really nicely. So let's get on and actually get some painting done and I'll chat to you as we go. So those of you who are regular viewers of my channel will know that my work tends to be um, quite precise. I use very small brushes for the details and um, yeah, I've painted like that for ages. I like my style, but what I want to do is just to inject a little bit more looseness into it. So 
I can have these really tight elements, but also um, a more expressive element too. I hope this is making sense. It's hard to describe what I want, but I think it's really just to loosen up a bit to inject a little bit more life into my work. So this is why I designated this sketchbook as my experimental sketchbook where I'm gonna paint loosely. So yeah, as I said, this was my first attempt at painting a kind of looser landscape. And I actually really enjoyed it so much that I decided to take what I've done here and actually work on um, a painting on watercolour paper. So this is a really heavy weight 640 GSM Fabriano Artistico paper. Has a lovely texture to it. So I masked off around the edge here and um, that's how I got this nice crisp line in case you're wondering. And then I just decided to take what I've done here and kind of just um, expand upon it, I suppose. And I did tighten it up a little bit. So this is a little bit more like my normal style of painting, but I've added a lot more um, texture and um, expressive mark making. And I would like to keep going with this series. I've called this my Cornish Coast series. So I'm kind of thinking, that maybe we'll just have fun working on another abstract. I feel a little bit nervous because I don't normally paint like this. Certainly not on camera. <laughs> but yeah, I think you've told me that you just like these really informal videos where I just sit down and I chat. And I think a lot of you kind of like it without music. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I've been trying to use music less in my videos. Now I'm just going to have fun. I'm literally just going to, we're going to play around and we're going to layer and just see what happens. But yeah, um, I think, and I know personally, actually, I do like music in videos, but I'm kind of, Sorry, my mixing palette, by the way, is off screen. I couldn't fit everything in. I might film a couple of shots of it and insert them here so you can see what it looks like, but it's my big ceramic mixing palette. And I've decided to use it for gouache. I was gonna use it for my watercolors, but I didn't need it necessarily for those. Um, but it gives me a lot of amazing mixing space for the gouache paints. Can you hear the dog? <laughs> That's Bert. He likes to bark when he's about to go out and have his walk. And he's down there barking away. This isn't meant to be a landscape or anything. This is purely going to be just an abstract me playing around with. I'm just kind of using the paints that are left over from another session. The paints I have on my palette. Um, I just want to see how we can layer different media over the top. This is just to loosen up and have fun, really. So yes, music in videos. I like it as long as it's not too intrusive and it's kind of fitting with the overall vibe of the video. Um, and you can still hear the person speaking. I don't like it if it's too loud or it's distracting from what the person is saying. I've actually had to turn videos off and I've otherwise enjoyed them because the person has played the music too loudly and I couldn't actually really hear. I was struggling to hear what they were saying if they were speaking quietly. So I kind of thought, I know what I like in videos and it's this kind of just calm, sit back and chat style of video. Um, maybe a little bit of music here and there, but I'm trying to make them with, with less music and just so they feel a bit more like you're here in the studio with me really. And we're just hanging out and possibly painting together and just having a chat, which is what would be lovely. Um, I feel like COVID times have made everything really difficult. Okay, we're gonna to have to wait for this to dry now, aren't we, before I can do anything else. Kind of is looking a little bit like a landscape, even though I didn't mean it to. One thing that I would quite like to do, shall I do it? Um, I'm gonna get this ice blue, because I did just use my fingers uh, with the other abstract. 
and it's quite fun to just just to be so free that you do that rather than always I mean fingers really force you to be free don't they <laughs> you can't really be precise with your fingers so this is just an exercise in loosening up and I'm finding that this is really helping me with my, what I would call my proper paintings. I'm working on a really big canvas at the moment um, in acrylic and the painting more loosely or drawing more loosely, because I haven't just done these. I mean, these are the ones in this sketchbook, the ones that I'm showing you, but I'm constantly these days doodling on scraps of paper and just playing around and layering materials and seeing what will happen. And I feel like it's feeding into my work, which is really nice. It's actually helping me to think differently, which is the idea behind this. So we're going to let that dry and then I'm going to start layering a little bit over the top, I think. Okay, right, what should we do first? Um, I'm kind of feeling, I mean, I may add some more paint as well, but I'm thinking at the moment, let's grab, should we grab the Payne's Grey? Let's do something in Payne's Grey. It feels good over the top of the gouache. I kind of feel like it's it's laying down more heavily, like it's kind of thicker. I don't know whether that's actually the case. I think it is though. Seems less precise than when I'm just using pencil on its own. So there we go. Again, I'm forced to be less precise. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Is it a dark cloud? Maybe it is. One thing I wanted to talk to you about, by the way, um, completely unrelated to this, <laughs> was that, you know, I started selling postcards and prints again in my shop. I did a while ago. Um, I used to do my own printing. I had a home printer, a professional Epson, um, light fast inks, pigment inks, um, fine art paper kind of printer. But I used it for years. It was a brilliant printer, generally speaking, but it was also a complete pain in the butt because it was constantly, um, there would be like issues with it now and again, and then I'd have to try and solve those issues. And because I'm not like the most technically minded person, um, I did manage to solve the issues, but it was just so annoying when you're in the middle of a print run, um, say if you've had a you know, run of sales in your shop and you're needing to get them out, get the orders out, and the printer suddenly jams or it suddenly starts um, putting ink blotches on your prints or it prints half a print. I mean, there are all sorts of issues and I had to try and sort them out. And I found with the rising price of the inks and the paper, I mean, they were just going up so much in recent years. I just kind of felt I'd used the printer for years and I was like, I don't want the stress of this anymore. I just felt like I couldn't deal with it. Um, so I wanted to kind of outsource the prints. So I found a really good printing company who send me proof prints so that I can approve them before we do a print run. Um, we're looking at the second print now because I put the first prints in the shop the other day. They've done such a good job with them and they're on fine art paper, they're archival, they've got the light fast inks. So they've been selling incredibly well, better than I could ever have hoped for. And so I'm looking to expand the range. But what I also want to do, now that I'm gonna be sending out many more orders, because obviously when you're selling prints and postcards, you're selling more than when you're just selling originals. Um, so basically I want to change to eco-friendly packaging as much as possible. So at the moment I'm using up the last of my cellophane sleeves. Um, I pop the postcard sets into those. Um, they tend to have a little vinyl sticker on them as well and I'm trying to switch over to a more eco-friendly sticker which I'm hoping to be able to do because I have found a supplier. Um, and I've also got, do you call them glassine? 
is it glassine envelopes or glossine envelopes I'm switching over to those because they're eco-friendly um, so I'll be using up the cellophane I have and then I'm switching over so this week I've kind of been looking into lots of different um, eco-friendly packaging I'm going to switch the tape I use from the plastic kind of packaging tape to um, a paper-based tape a bit like the one Jackson's uses when they send your art supplies so yeah it's it's all taken quite a bit of time this week to kind of research all of this and find out you know the best prices the best suppliers um, but it's been really interesting and I kind of like the idea that very soon my packaging is going to be much more ooh, I just hit the palette then <laughs> much more eco-friendly so I'm like really happy about that so that's something I've been doing this week that has taken quite a bit of time but now I found the suppliers um, hopefully yeah the switch over will be happening soon I've ordered new packaging supplies I kind of reinvested some of the money from the sales of the prints and postcards um, into doing that and I'm also ordering more prints and postcards so yeah the shop will be hopefully restocked soon and I'll gradually be switching to more sustainable packaging which I think is really important um, it's been bothering me for a while about the cellophane um, so yeah that's what I've been researching this week you see how well this Holbein Artist soft white pencil goes over the paint it's so good I mean this really is looking like a rain cloud <laughs> we are just having fun here I mean I love the fact that we can just layer and layer if I really hated this I could just kind of layer over the top of it um, but yeah I very rarely do abstract painting so this is quite fun I love these pit oil based pencils that I bought um, they were in the last art haul they are so good for layering and they're much more precise can you see you see that um, tip there you can get a really fine point on them and it's brilliant if you want a bit of detail so even going over the top of this whereas the luminance was very like quite rough and textured this is much more precise we're just going to be making some marks and having some fun I love doing this because it's just so freeing I'm not trying to do anything representational I'm not putting pressure on myself by the way I'm really loving these Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura watercolor markers if you remember I bought three of these recently um, they were in the most recent art haul well I've since spent some more of my affiliate credit on four more of them from Jackson's um, amazing colours, just such beautiful colours. I'm really looking forward to using them. I've put them aside because I want to do a sort of small art haul. Um, as you know, I like to show you everything I have bought before I actually use it. So I can't use them at the moment. This is one from the first, not the first art haul, but the most recent art haul. This is the beige red, but I'm loving them. I'm particularly loving this brush pen end because you can lay down just so much colour at once. Oh wow, I actually really like it. <laughs> I thought, I'm gonna completely mess this up. But this, oh my goodness, I love how that layers over the top of the gouache. Because I guess it's watercolour, can you see that? It's actually really quite transparent, so you're seeing the gouache underneath. I love that. I previously only layered the um, sepia one, which is really dark, over the top of, oh, I really like that, over the top of gouache, which kind of completely covered it. But this one, I'm loving that you can see through that. I need to just clean that off because the tip now has gouache paint on it. Fortunately, I have a sketch pad beside me. But I can just clean that off with because I don't want that to sort of dry on there and affect the marker pen so I'm just sort of rolling the tip and cleaning it off I think that's pretty clean you've got to look after your pens look after your tools and they will last a long time
Look how well this Payne's Grey 30% Lumens pencil layers over the top of the gouache. That's really good if you'd like to just knock it back a bit, cover up something you're not too happy with. It won't layer over the top of the Holbein Artist soft white pencil very well, but I expected that. And that's why I bought this pencil because, oh, this pencil, <laughs> pointing at the wrong thing. That's why I bought this pencil because I wanted something that really would sit over the top of other media. And that one really does the trick. That's nice, that's created a sort of misty looking feel. I love the Payne's Grey 30%. Such a gorgeous colour. I've got a Derwent Lightfast here in Midnight Black, another one of my new favourites as well. So let's try that over the top. Oh, that works well. I feel like this has a better point over the top of other media um, than the luminance. I mean, the luminance, as you can see, covers really well, but you can't get a very fine point. But with the um, pit oil base, you can, and with the light fast, you seem to be able to get quite a good point as well. Um, what can we do up there? I'm gonna try a little bit of the Woody 3-in-1. Um, I love working with these. <laughs> They're so much fun. You can lay down such a large area of colour. It is like being a kid again, actually. And playing with your chunky crayons or something. But you won't be able to layer anything <laughs> over the top of this. Because they are so waxy. Oh yeah, we've got the Neo Colour over here as well. I have three Neo Colours. The Salmon, the White and the Light Grey. They were just beside me. These are all Neo Colour 1. These are the ones that aren't water soluble. They resist water, so that could be quite interesting as well. If you wanted to use it as kind of like a wax resist and then paint over the top, that could be quite interesting with these. I don't really use them like that. I tend to just use them to layer. Um, the Neo Color 2, in case you don't know them, I'm sure a lot of you do, but um, those ones are water soluble and I've recently purchased, I think, eight of them. I just wanted to get a few colors so that I can experiment with them and I got my kind of type of colour palette, <laughs> you know, how I love my certain colours. Um, so yeah, I just chose eight that I thought were real Natasha colours. Um, so I look forward to sharing those with you in the next art haul and we'll have a little play around with those. But these ones are really gorgeous. We just, oh look at that. Such a beautiful colour. I'm just going to hold it up so you can see that and the grey works really well together. Work really well together? Works really well together. I sometimes think when I'm filming these videos I've lost the ability to speak English properly. It's because I don't normally talk while I'm painting or drawing. I would just be quietly sitting here probably with another art YouTuber on in the background or watching a documentary or something and I wouldn't need to be talking. So it's really, it's challenging, let me tell you. It's challenging <laughs> to have to talk and make sense. I really feel like I do lose the ability to speak properly sometimes. Should we try this? Uh, I want to see. Yeah, this, I would say, that a white neo color one covers oh look at this this is good if i go over the pit oil base look it's having no effect they're just they're literally standing out as much as if i hadn't put anything over the top which is quite amazing pit oil base i think trumps everything you can't cover up a pit oil base it just won't let you 
But yeah, I would say that um, the Stabilo Woody and the White Neo Color, I kind of feel like they're a little bit similar. It's like just, this is like a chunkier version because they look very similar when you lay them down. Okay, so let's just have a little bit of a go with this light gray one. Do some little dashes here. Such gorgeous color, this light gray. Goes really well with the salmon. Actually, while I was ordering the Neo Color 2, I noticed, because I had a look at the Neo Color 1s as well, and I noticed that they'd changed some of the colors or they'd stopped doing some of the colors that I have or used to have. Because um, I bought quite a few. I bought 32, I think, about a year ago um, when I first got into kind of experimenting with different media. And I just bought a whole range of colors and that was a big mistake for me. Um, I thought that I needed almost every color they did because I was going to be using them on their own to um, draw with or whatever. And it just didn't work out that way for me. I like them to add um, marks on top sometimes. I like them to add a little bit of texture or um, expressive marks but I don't really use them just on their own. And the colors I had just weren't inspiring to me because I just bought almost the entire range, really. I say almost the entire range. I think of Neo Color 1, they don't do as many as Neo Color 2. So yeah, I had like 32 of them and I wasn't using them. So I basically sold them <laughs> to somebody on Instagram who wanted to try them. And I gave them to her for like half the price I paid for them. Um, I barely used them. So she did get a good deal, which is really good because they've gone off to a new home. Um, but I did keep some of the colors. So I think I kept like five of them. And I found that I'm really enjoying them now, so that's why I decided to get extra in the form of Neo Color 2, because I thought it would be fun to try those. But yeah, we're really filling this page, aren't we? This pencil I'm using now is one of the Derwent drawing pencils. This is in ink blue. Love these. These layer beautifully over pretty much anything. And they are so creamy. They're one of my favorite pencils. And I haven't been using them enough over the past few months because they really are gorgeous. When I use them again, I remember why I love them so much. I have a lot of art materials, but I really want to use them. I don't just want to like hoard them and like, you know, when you get tempted to buy different things and sometimes you don't use them. And I think that's really sad. I always want to use my materials because that's what they're for. And this is why I've been selling or giving away a lot of the materials I wasn't using. And I've just been investing in really high quality materials that I know I'm gonna love using. And I really want to experiment with and I do feel like it's really moving my work along. My work is evolving and that's quite exciting. It's really so pleasurable just to draw these little circles and dots here. If I wasn't chattering away all the time, it would be like a meditation. I think I'm going to add a little bit of this ash green paint and just smoosh it in a bit. <laughs> Such a gorgeous colour. That right um, kind of shade of greyish green. It's so fun just seeing what layers over the top of, of what <laughs> and um, whether they layer over the top of each other. I'm thinking about how I could use it in like um, a proper work of art, like something finished and you know, something that I would sell, for example. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna make abstracts to sell anytime soon. These are just for fun. Quite nice to have something a bit brighter on there, wouldn't it? 
Shall we put a bit of turquoise? We did put a bit of that, was it ice blue earlier? Let's just, oh yeah. <laughs> Let's just dot a bit of that about. That is a beautiful, beautiful color. I know I say this about all the colors. I love all the colors. <laughs> so shoot me. Look at my fingers. One thing I've learned through doing this is don't be afraid to keep layering if you don't like something. Or you feel like something looks a little bit heavy or dominant. It's like just keep layering because it actually ooh, it's making the paint flake off. Maybe don't layer too much or at least wait until your paint is dry before you're layering. I mean, it can cause some quite interesting effects to happen, but they might be unintentional. But it's like I quite like going over with the white because then you can see all of these different layers happening below. Anyway, this is, this is all good fun. I'm actually really enjoying this so much. It's so pleasurable. <laughs> it's like I'm not having to think too much. I mean, I'm thinking a little bit about what might work, but it's not like when I'm working on like a more representational piece or I'm worried about how it's going to turn out because it's like on expensive paper or something. I'm going to just go over that cloud a little bit. Let's, let's blend him in. See how good the neo colors are for just adding this lovely layer what it's done is make it look really kind of misty which i really like one thing i did quickly want to talk to you about actually before i finish this and we end this video is that i've been working on something behind the scenes which is why I haven't really had time for very many videos over the past week and a half. In fact, I haven't made any videos over the past week and a half. I think my last one was like 10, 11 days ago. Um, and normally I would post more regularly than that. And I will in the future as well. I intend to post more regularly than that. But I've had the shop update. But not only that, I've been working on something behind the scenes that I hope some of you at least are going to really like or are going to want to participate in. Um, I am actually going to launch a Patreon and it's going to, I don't want to give too much away because I actually want you to visit it when I've launched it. I'm planning on launching in early September, hopefully. And then you can see everything that's going to be on offer each month. I've decided upon this after discussing it with Dominic um, I tried Patreon once, um, I think about a year and a half ago, something like that. And then I moved to Kofi, but nothing really seemed quite right. I couldn't quite get the balance right. Nothing really fitted because I was trying to manage my art career and YouTube and Patreon and or Kofi. Um, it was getting to be a bit too much because I hadn't really thought it through properly and had a solid like business plan for it. Well, over the past couple of weeks, I've been working on a solid business plan for this one. And I've talked it through with Dominic, who's been very, very helpful. He's listened and kind of like been another set of ears for me to um, kind of bounce my ideas off and We've kind of talked it through together, what I can manage each month. I want to continue with YouTube. I'm going to continue with that, probably aiming for about one video per week. But I'm also going to do Patreon and I have, I hope, some really exciting stuff that's going to be happening on there. For those of you who've asked me for more content, um, I can't keep producing more and more content for YouTube because... I'm going to be really honest with you here. YouTube takes a lot of time um, and as much as I absolutely love it and want to continue doing it, I can't produce even more content than I already am because I make more money, much more money when I devote that time to art. So by selling my paintings and licensing my work and selling like now the prints and the postcards and so on, being able to put time into that is so important because 
that's really where I earn my income. My YouTube channel isn't big enough to earn, I mean, it earns me a nice little extra on the side each month, actually more than I thought it would at this stage, but it's not enough for me to forfeit the artwork in favour of YouTube. So I'm trying to find a good balance for the people who want more content, for my health and my need to have this work-life balance, which after I was ill the other month, I really do need. I'm kind of reassessing everything I'm doing at the moment and trying to find more balance so that I can look after myself. Anyway, um, I don't want to ramble on too much about this. I really want to launch it and I want you to go and have a look at it. And if it's something you would love to join me in, then that would be fantastic. But I have a lot of really exciting stuff planned. If you love my color palettes, if you um, love the art classes, <laughs> if you want more tutorials, um, if you want more behind the scenes studio stuff, if you want me to go very in depth about my process and about my business and career as an artist, this is where that content is gonna be. Um, so it's going to be like an addition to YouTube, but it's going to be much more in depth. I think that's the best way of describing it. Um, there will be other little perks and benefits too. Um, I'll wait until I launch and you can go and have a look because that will explain it much better than I can here. And I'm still kind of fine tuning it. But just know that I'm building a Patreon and I really want it to be this fantastic, inspiring creative place this community like a private community where those of you who want more content and um, would like to see more from me each month can come and I will be able to run it because I will hopefully be earning a bit of an income from it so if it takes me away from my art a little bit it's not so much of a big problem because I still have the income um, but obviously I don't want it to impact on my art too much. So we've tried to find a balance and we've tried to be realistic about what I can achieve each month. Anyway, that is an exciting thing that's been happening. Um, I thought long and hard about this because I didn't know whether I would ever go back to Patreon, but looking at the different platforms, this offers what I need to be able to share with you the type of content I want to share with you. Anyway, shall we just call this done? I think before I completely cover it up with white, or maybe just, I'm just thinking a little bit more here. Oh, that smudges the Derwent drawing pencil a bit, which is actually quite a nice effect. Softens those edges. a little bit of mark making down here it could be quite nice to have a little something over the top there it's just so much fun to scribble okay I think we're gonna call it a day Shall we? <laughs> I never know when to stop. Shall we just maybe, maybe just add a little bit more there? Am I going to stop? Okay, thanks everyone for joining me. If you've made it this far, if you're still here, leave a little comment in the comment section saying, I made it to the end. <laughs> and yeah, I thank you if you did actually, because I think this is going to be quite a long one. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, this is just all about having fun in your sketchbook really. And uh, yeah, it was really nice to film this and I want to do more sketchbook videos because they're always so inspiring and so enjoyable to film. Okay, take care everyone and I will see you again in the next video.